Right, so the filtration unit comes uh, with the tank and the lid and these three layers of metala. Now, these layers are different than the regular metala sheets, um, except for this one. This one is the same as a metala sheet, but just cut round. Uh, but the green and the blue are coils. So they're kind of like a snail shell where there's a strip um, that is glued together and it wraps around like that in a coil. So it gives you this really super thick layer of metala. The unique thing about the metala filtration media, well, there's a few unique things about it. One is um, it uses a, it's been designed to have a combination of flow as well as high surface area. Very, very important in a pond filter because you don't want clogging and channeling um, restricting how much uh, filter media is being used. So by channeling, what will happen is that if you had, say, foam, for example, um, foam sponge filter media is very commonly used in ponds, um, but the small particles will stick to the foam and then start clogging it, which means that the water will bypass that area of foam, which means that the, uh, the surface area is not being used, the bacteria that lives on it isn't having the water flow going over it, so the, it, it's nowhere near as efficient as uh, what it is compared to the metala. So the metala's got this unique um, matrix type of filter media, kind of like two, two minute noodle packet looking. Um, but what, it, what happens is that as the water comes up, it's forced to travel in these different directions. And what that does is it slows the flow down a little bit to allow the bacteria to, uh, to do its thing. But also what will happen is that with the water going like that, it helps the solid settle out because they're not flowing straight through and they've got to go through so that the, the, as the water slows, uh, slows down, the solids drop out of suspension. Um, the other thing with the Metala is that it's, uh, it's staggered in terms of the, the coarseness of it. So you've got this black one, which is the most coarse, then you've got green, then you've got blue, then there is another one which is grey, which is finer still. And what that means is that, again, from a clogging and a flow perspective, when in this instance it's an upflow filter, so what happens is that the water comes in here and the, the, uh, the solids, the larger sort of solids, get stuck on here, but the really fine stuff will still flow through so it doesn't clog. Then it goes through to the green and the next stage of filtration, so the um, slightly larger particles that got through, or the slightly smaller particles get through here, um, won't go through there, and then it steps through to the blue where the really fine ones get um, removed as well. So there's a whole um, staging or staggering of, uh, of solids filtration removal. Now with the Koi Clear filter, uh, there's even one more step, and that is because this is an upflow filter, so the water enters through the bottom and comes up, and what we do when we set these up is that um, uh, we put a little 90 degree bend on it so that when the water comes in, it wants to go in a vortex action, a circular action. And what happens then is that the solids come in towards the center and then drop out of suspension. Um, I remember when I was a kid, you used to have a, a round swimming pool and you, you'd, you'd circle around and you'd walk around, walk around, walk around, and all the crap would go towards the center. Um, that's what happens in here. Now, with that in mind, it's very important that you have the right flow going through there. Uh, generally, people try and push too much water through a filter. Every single biological filter on the market has an optimum uh, flow rate where if you exceed that and push too much water through it, it means that the filter is not adequately doing its thing. So the, um, uh, the bacteria doesn't have enough contact time to, to effectively work. Uh, the optimal flow through these is about 10,000 litres an hour, something like that, you know, sort of eight to 12 thereabouts. Um, you can have this set up to, you could put 100,000 litres of water through this if you, if you um, plumbed it correctly, but it doesn't mean you want to because you're not getting the, the appropriate filtration. So if you've got a larger pump, you need to divert some of the water or valve it and turn it down um, to make sure that the, the right flow is going through. Now also when it comes to larger ponds that these are used for, uh, what, can, what can happen, a lot of sort of people that sell pond stuff will say, oh okay, you've got to have circulate your water once, or the entire pond volume once an hour or once every two hours or you know, whatever their recommendation is. So you've got an 80,000 litre pond and if you circulate that, in theory, you need an 80,000 litre or a 40,000 litre depending on all, what the recommendation is, but you only want 10 to 12 going through this. So people sort of push it through or divert it, but 
it's actually an expensive way of doing it. What, when we do larger ponds like this, what we'll say is focus on the flow rate through the filter for the size of the pump that you need. Obviously, if you've got a waterfall or something like that, then you'll, you'll, you'll do a larger pump and divert the water. Or you might even do two pumps and one run through your filter, one through a waterfall, turn the waterfall on and off when you need to. Um, but if you're just running a straight filtration and you're not fussed about waterfalls and all the rest of it, focus on the right flow through here and the rest of that circulation and, and water movement do with an aeration system. So kind of like a big fish tank aerator in principle, but dot some, some air diffusers in the pond, circulate the water that way, filter it this way, you'll save money overall on the, the difference between a big monster pump and a smaller one, even with the added cost of aeration. But more importantly, as power gets more and more expensive, you're gonna save money because you're pumping air, not water, so that uses much less uh, power, and then you're using a less uh, power consumption um, pump for this. Now, coming back to the filter in terms of the setup, uh, they don't, from the factory, it's not pre-plumbed and they deliberately do that because uh, customers will want to do their own thing in terms of how these things are plumbed. Um, what we've found at that 10 to 12,000 litre sort of um, flow through, you want to have at least 80 mil outlet coming out the top of the filter to allow the water to flow out and, and, and not back up. Now that 80 mil, could be, um, you can get irrigation fittings that are quite expensive, tank outlets that you can get in 80 mil. Um, what we do when we um, uh, supply the unit is we actually use 100 mil um, stormwater uh, with this tank outlet fitting, it's same as used in rainwater tanks. This goes up the top and then you put your stormwater pipe coming out through here and then you'll go down through elbows or straights or you know, whatever it is that you wanna, uh, you wanna do in that regard. Um, now the reason why, why Matala don't pre-plumb it is that that might suit one application but you might also have another application where a customer does want to split the water off and go in different places. So instead of having um, one of these outlets they may have two or they may have 250 mils or 350 mils or 280 mils or whatever. It's, it, it, it gives you that, um, that versatility of um, uh, where you want to put the plumbing. Uh, in terms of the inlet, this is what, uh, what we do use um, for the inlet. So this is a, a, a tank outlet fitting um, and it's got a seal on either side. So whenever you, you, you're installing these, you're getting hole saws and drilling them into the plastic um, and trying to get the, uh, the exact ho uh, hose saw size. Hose saw? No, no. Hole saw. <laughs> um, so what you do with this is down the bottom on the tank, there's a uh, 45 degree piece and then there's a flat piece down the bottom and then you get up to the main tank. So what we do with this is that you drill your hole in here and you separate this so that the, um, the hose tail here is on the outside. So this is what you'll see on the outside. And then you've got your two rubber seals on either side. That gives you a watertight seal. And then on the inside, this is a piece that I said before, you have this 90 degree bend, so the water comes in and then starts, helps that vortex flow and just directs the water around through, through that way. The flat one here, what we do down here is we put on a sludge drain. So this is just simply a valve with another tank outlet. And now the sludge drain, you're not gonna put it on the same spot. You might put it on this side, you might put it on that side, you might put it uh, over on the other side. This is where the, the, the freedom of plumbing uh, is also valuable or useful. Uh, and so the, uh, the similar sort of setup where you don't need the valve on the inside here, uh, oh sorry, you don't need the 90 degree on the inside here, but what you do is you will have a, um, uh, this going through the inside again and a valve here, and this hose will run off to your garden bed or your waistline or whatever. And so what you do here is the valve will shut it off when you don't want any water flowing through. And then when you do want to clean it and all that sludge that's settled through the vortex action comes down the bottom, you simply open the valve and the water will flow out of there um, with the sludge. Watch it, watch it, watch it. It's getting cleaner, cleaner, shut it off and then um, uh, you're back to normal operation again. So it's very easy to clean. Um, now the sludge drain is really only useful when you're standing the filter upright, like this. 
Now, very, very important, you can see the filter is quite strong and sturdy and will stand upright by itself. But if you stand this upright out in the garden on its own like this, this has basically got a ton of water in it. So even if you uh, fill this up right now on this level concrete surface, um, it's going to hold water and it's going to stand upright. But what will happen over time is that, and especially outside in the sunlight, is that being plastic, it will get a little bit malleable. And what will happen over time is that if this isn't perfectly level or if it's a little bit off or the sun's hitting on one side and not, not the other, you may find that it starts to lean and then you may find that it actually just blows out and all your filter goes everywhere. So you never ever set these up without any support. Um, there is an optional um, Koi Clear stand that Matala do. And that's a, um, a stainless steel um, stand that comes in this, this kit form type scenario. And that just goes around the bottom of the, uh, of the filter. And that will act as support. You can knock something up yourself. Uh, you know, if you're handy on the tools and you can do it out of wood, you can do whatever. Um, but the other way that you can uh, run these filters is they don't have to be freestanding. You can bury them into the ground. You can partially bury them into the ground up to anywhere here, and that should be fine to support it. You won't need the, um, uh, any more support than that. Or you can fully bury it into the ground if you want to hide it, and in which case you can literally put this at ground level, have your lid on top, and all that you see on the surface is, um, is the top of the lids. Now, when you are doing it with that type of installation, um, Probably less likely you're going to use the sludge drain because um, unless you have, uh, you know, on the side of a hill and you can access it on one side or something like that, um, it's going to be a bit difficult to, uh, to use, so you may sacrifice that. In which case, from a cleaning point of view, then you just pull the pads out and vacuum the sludge out, you know, maybe once a year or however often, depending on how many fish you've got in there. Um, be, being that it's an upflowing filter, if it's buried all the way into the ground and you've got your outlet up the top here where the water runs out, then again, as long as the filter is up above higher than water level, then that will just flow back down into the pond. So although it's a whopping big filter, uh, you can still hide it behind a waterfall or on the side of the pond or something like that if you don't want to see it. They are modular, so um, we rate these, or Matala rates these for 20,000 litre koi ponds. Koi are, 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 are pigs of the water world, they excrete a hell of a lot of, excrete a hell of, a lot of waste. So these are really, really good for koi ponds because of that clogging issue. Foam filters in koi ponds don't really work that well because they clog up all the time. Um, but these are modular, so let's say you had a 40,000 litre pond, a 60,000 litre pond, or let's say you had a 20,000 litre pond and you started off with half a dozen koi or 10 koi, and three, four years later, you've got 40 or 50 koi and the filtration's not coping because even though it's 20,000 litres, you've, you're way overstocked. Being that they're modular, either right from the beginning or as an afterthought, as long as you leave enough space to do so when you build it, you can add these filters and bank them. So what you would do in that instance is the outlet coming out of here, you'd have a second filter here side by side, you've had, you'd have your pipe come out of here, go down the bottom and then going into the next filter, in which case you'd just get another one of these, put that on the inlet and then the 100 mil is just going in there all the way through and on your second filter, that's your outlet going back to the pond. So with the outlet, you've also got to make sure that you don't drill the hole before you've put the filter media in place because if you, um, it's gonna be, it is a tight fit getting the, the filter media in. So when you push that down into place, if you drilled the hole down here already and you found out that you needed to have the hole right up the top, which you do need to do, you actually need to have the hole right up the top, otherwise you won't get that um, distance between the filter um, media. But if you have it down here, it means that the water's not flowing freely. You want the water to be um, up flowing, be, um, uh, not restricted by the, uh, the filter. So make sure that the outlet goes right up the top. So they're, they're really well thought out, really good value filter for doing a large koi pond. And they're a hell of a lot easier than trying to do it yourself or trying to use bog filters or really old technology that clogs up and you've got to clean all the time. Anything you're doing with your pond, you should think with maintenance in mind. You want to have as low a maintenance as, as, as possible because otherwise it becomes a chore. And when it's a chore, you don't do it. And then you start losing fish because your filter's not doing the, the appropriate job. 
Um, so think about maintenance when it comes to cleaning. Now, when it comes to cleaning this pond, or this, sorry, this filter, um, how these are structured is you've got your black that goes in first, then you have your green, then you have your blue. Now, if you're using the sludge drain and you've got um, access to non-chlorinated tap water, uh, you may just lift the blue one out and hose it, get a gurney. You may leave the blue one in there, get a gurney, push all the crap down to the bottom and then use your sludge discharge to get it out. Uh, otherwise, what you can do is just remove these coils. Um, how often you need to do this, I can't say. It will depend, you know, it might be a year, it might be a month. It depends on how many fish you've got in there. I wouldn't think it'd be a month, but um, uh, you probably want to do it at least once a year to get a gauge as to how dirty it is um, when it comes time to clean it. But you just pull those out, get a pond vacuum, vacuum the waste out, and you're done. Uh, these coils, um, they're great and new when they come out of the factory. They're all nice and neat like this. But one of the aspects with a filtration system is that you want to make sure that it, the, the, the media that goes in here is a snug fit because otherwise all the water will go bypass it and go around the outside. So they are a tight fit and when, when you've pulled them out and they're a bit um, saggy and heavy, uh, you may find that um, you start losing your shape and the coils sort of come up like this. Don't be too alarmed by that, like that's okay if it doesn't have to be perfectly even in there as long as the water's not getting around. 